Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes and this is the 2014 Kia Sorento. Now Kia has lightly refreshed the Sorento for 2014 and we're taking a look at the EX model here with the 3.3 liter V6. Let's hop on the inside, let's dive under the hood, take it out on the road and see how it is. There are two different engine options in the Sorento for 2014. Things start out with the familiar 2.4 liter 191 horsepower four cylinder engine and our particular model gets the all new direct injection 3.3 liter V6 of course has dual overhead cams and variable valve timing and that puts out 290 horsepower which is quite good for this class as well as for this engine size. Now both engines are mated to a six speed automatic transmission that's manufactured by Hyundai and Kia and of course it sends power to the front wheels or to all four wheels depending on which option you choose. The first generation Sorento was a traditional truck based body on frame SUV that sent power to the rear wheels or had an optional locking four wheel drive system. This new Sorento since 2011 is a more traditional crossover vehicle like the rest of the ones on the market. It normally sends power to the front wheels unless there's some wheel slip in which case it'll send power to the rear. But the one thing that Kia has preserved from its old truck based days are more truck like profile tires. Back here we have fairly wide 235 with rubber, but they are 60 profile 18 inch wheels, which means that the ratio of rubber to the wheel is slightly larger than you'd find in some of the other crossover competition. It means that if you're on a really rough road, you're less likely to bend your rim when you hit a rock, but the on-road manners do suffer a little bit. Our commenters and viewers have been wanting us to talk more about styling, so here it goes. The back end of SUVs are always a little bit tricky to style if you ask me because if you want a practical SUV you need to have a relatively flat hatch that's really going on here with the Sorento because of course there is a seven passenger option as well and that's very different than things like the Venza which has a very sloping rear profile because there's of course only five seats in the vehicle. We have a single chrome exhaust tip over here and if we move on to the side you can see that we have a fairly typical side profile. It's a little bit boring, honestly, if you ask me, but then nobody in this crossover segment is all that exciting. And if we go around to the front, you'll see that the 2014 Sorento now features the new Kia, sort of a BMW-esque kidney grill. That's what I think I'll call that. Uh, with large Kia logo. We get some very re sob reminiscent headlamps, if you ask me. I think the front end is very attractive. I love the new Kia lines because they're attractive, but they're also very simple. Um, a little bit more muscular than the Hyundai lines. Um, and Hyundai is going for something that's a little bit uh, swoopier, a little bit more dramatic, but I'm not really quite sure how well that will age in the long term. Front seat comfort in the Sorento is good, but it's about average for this particular segment. These front seats are a little bit firm for my tastes, and they aren't exactly wide either. We do have a nicely adjustable power driver seat, however, with two-way adjustable power lumbar support and a multi-way headrest that moves in and out, as you can see. We also get a tilt telescoping steering column, and as part of an option package, we do have a two-position power memory driver's seat in our particular model. Now as part of that same package we also get a four-way power passenger seat uh, but the recline mechanism in the seat is still manual. If we take a look around the interior you can see we have a large amount of fake wood in our Sorento. It is somewhat believable fake wood however. It's not exactly the best I've seen but it's not the worst either. We have a fairly dominant center stack with a large touchscreen navigation and infotainment system which we'll go over in a bit. Dual zone climate control, of course, and in our EX model, we get heated and cooled front seats. And of course, down here, we have the USB plug for our media device. If we come over here to the instrument cluster, you can see that our Sorento gets a partial LCD disco dash. So you can see the speedometer portion of the instrument cluster has been replaced with a large screen here. As you can see, it offers uh, fuel economy, AV information, navigation information, service information, and of course, vehicle settings. Certain things are configurable in the system as well. You can change whether you want to see predominantly miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's not quite as configurable as something like a Cadillac uh, XTS digital gauge cluster. The Sorento uses Kia's new corporate steering wheel, which is very nice. It has a nice leather wrap feel. Of course, get our Bluetooth phone interface buttons down here. These particular buttons control that LCD dash in the instrument cluster, cruise control voice command over here, and our usual infotainment buttons over here. Continuing down the center console, we have our gear shift, of course. We have two cup holders and these easily swallowed large American style takeout cups. We have our active eco button, which changes the throttle and transmission mapping in our vehicle. Park sensor disable for the rear parking sensors. And of course, a button to turn on and off the 115 volt power inverter that's standard in our Sorento EX. Let's talk plastics quality because that's something that the press really spends an awful lot of time on. If you look at the dashboard in the Kia Sorento, you'll see that this is pretty hard touch plastics. We also have hard plastics lower in the dashboard. 
hard plastics over here, hard plastics even on the doors. So all the, all the upper and the lower portions of the driver's side door are hard. So if you tend to rest your arm on the upper part of the door, that's gonna be a little bit more painful in the Sorento than some of the competition. However, Kia does offer a wide variety of features in this particular vehicle that you won't find in the competition. We, of course, get the heated and cooled seats. We get that LCD disco dash, which you just saw. We get dual zone climate control. We have power folding side view mirrors. You know, they fold at the touch of a button over here. We have the two position seat memory. We have a driver power seat. Uh, we, of course, get this large panoramic sunroof over here, which will open and you can see. Or we'll have to turn on the car for that one. We, of course, get the keyless entry and keyless go. As you can see, we have this very large panoramic sunroof, which goes all the way to the rear. If you were to ask me, I think that that's a valid trade. So I think that the, uh, the creature comforts in this vehicle in trade for these hard plastics, that's a worthwhile trade for me. My complaint really is in vehicles where you don't get the creature comforts and you have the hard plastics. But in this Kia Sorento, I think the hard plastics are just fine, especially when you take a look at the fact that our particular vehicle started at $31,700 and essentially fully loaded ended up at $35,700. This is a very good value in this particular segment. It's about $5,000 cheaper than the American or Japanese competition. The rear seats in the Sorento are comfortable and they're easy to get in and out of. They're also a little bit higher off the ground than most crossover vehicles, which makes sitting in them a lot more comfortable for adults. This front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall, so you can see I have several inches of leg room left. Now there's barely any hump in the middle of the Sorento. So if I go to the middle seat, thanks to that front wheel drive chassis, there's a decent amount of leg room for a middle passenger. And there's still a bit of headroom as well, even though our particular model has the optional panoramic roof. If I move all the way over to the other side, you can see the Sorento has a few niceties like these standard window shades that are integrated well into the rear doors. The quality of the plastics in the rear, however, is not a whole lot better than in the front. So we still have the hard plastic upper, hard plastic lower, and the only soft touch plastics you'll find on the doors are right here at the armrest. In terms of cup holders, rear passengers get two large cup holders here in this padded center armrest. These were able to accommodate the largest sodas I was able to throw at them. And of course, we get two bottle holders, one integrated into each door. We also get reclining seat backs in the rear, which is quite a nice feature. So you can see the range of recline is fairly good on these seats as well. They go from a decidedly uncomfortable, uh, very vertical position, mostly so that you can uh, enlarge your cargo area in the back. So if you need to fit a very large square item in the rear, you can set these middle seats to that very upright position. You can still buckle someone in, although this is not gonna be very comfortable, to a decidedly reclining uh, seating position back here. And unlike many cars that have reclining rear seats, if I recline the seat that's closer to the camera, you can see that the recline angle starts low in the seat back. So it's not hitting you somewhere strange in the middle of the seat back. That's something that an awful lot of crossovers do for some reason. The Sorento is available in a seven passenger version, which means of course we get a convenient cubby right there under the load floor of our five passenger version. You can almost fit someone in there, maybe if they're a little smaller. On the uh, real cargo carrying side, however, we can fit quite a number of large roller bags, as you can see in the cargo area. Even when this 60-40 folding section of the seat is folded in its most reclined position. This, of course, is in its most upright position, allowing you to square off that cargo area so you can put larger cargo items in here. Overall, the Sorento scores a solid nine out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index because, of course, we also get a power closing trunk lid. Our Sorento is equipped with Kia's UVO infotainment system, controlled by this large LCD in the dash just below the CD player. And if you aren't interested in our in-depth review of this infotainment system, then just follow that little link down below and fast forward to the drive section of our review. Now this system is standard on our EX model and it's controlled by these direct access buttons here. And of course there's some climate control buttons below it. Now, unlike some of the other systems, this system really just gives you a climate display. So all the climate control buttons are physical buttons and knobs in the system, but the system uh, is integrated with this infotainment display. So it'll show you your status of your climate control system. We have our fairly typical AM and FM interface with presets along the top, menu button over here for auto store, preset scans, etc. Similar thing going on in the Sirius satellite radio over here as well. We have our track up and down buttons here as you would expect. Going over to the map button, we have our fairly typical mapping interface with of course traffic information displayed on this particular system as you can see. Now that is serious traffic data, so you do have to have a serious traffic subscription for this data service to work. 
destination entry is very uh, straightforward here. We have access to points of interest, uh, stored addresses, etc. in this particular system. Address entry is very easy and it can be done while you're in motion, which is a nice feature in the system. Now you can do that in motion when you're using the voice commands in the system or the buttons right here on the screen so your passenger can also enter an address for you. We're here on the phone button. We have our fairly typical phone interface, nothing fancy going on here. Now, unlike my Ford Touch and Toyota's Entune system, there are no voice commands for your iDevice library in this particular system. So that means you have to use this on-screen interface in order to control and search for your tunes. This does take quite a bit more time than those other competitive systems, although the system does cache your information. So it is fairly responsive and you can touch various portions of this list here to fast forward, but there's no keyboard on here. So you can't skip directly to the M's or the P's or uh, you know, a particular beginning letter. So that means it does take a decent amount of time uh, with your eyes off the road if you want to hunt and peck for a particular song on your iDevice. Not something I would necessarily recommend. Of course, leave that to your passenger. Down here we have a root button. So you can see that's where we would control all of our mapping and uh, navigation functions here. It's nice that they separate this from the map button and the destination button so you have easy access to these particular functions. Uh, but even so, Kia didn't go button heavy with this particular system. As you can see, it's, they kept it to a relative minimum, which is quite nice. This display is part of the $4,000 touring package in our EX model, and it includes the navigation system, the Infinity surround system, which does sound excellent in this particular vehicle, the ventilated front driver and front passenger seat, blind spot detection, the four-way passenger seat, the panoramic moonroof with power sunshade, the memory driver's seat with memory mirrors, the power folding outside mirrors, and of course the power lift gate, which is a decent amount of tech for that $4,000. If we click on this button with the I and the gear on it, that takes us over to our setup page as well as our info and UVO services. Now the UVO services do require an Apple iPhone or an Android device with the appropriate UVO app on it. You do have to register that app with Kia, so our particular vehicle does not have access to these services because our app is not registered, unfortunately. We do have access to Parking Minder, which helps you find your vehicle in a parking space, Vehicle Diagnostics, which connects you with the Kia server and helps you diagnose uh, problems, you know, check engine light, that sort of thing on your car. We have roadside assistance where you can call for help. My point of interest allows you to synchronize point of interests with your device or with your web browser on your regular computer. Of course, we have a guide, GPS info, and help, of course. Compared to my Ford Touch and Toyota's Entune system, UVO is still a little bit behind because it does lack the voice commands for your USB library or your iDevice, but the rest of the system is very snappy and it's definitely worth that $4,000, especially when you consider all the other tech that's bundled with that same package. This rough mountain road that we're on right now really is what the Sorento is all about because the Sorento is trying to be a more off-road or soft-road capable crossover than a number of its competitors, most namely that Ford Edge and the Toyota Venza. Uh, the GMC Terrain and Chevy Equinox definitely have similar ground uh, clearance to this Sorento and similar off-road prowess, but the, uh, the GM SUVs wrap it in honestly a better suspension design. Uh, they're just feel nicer on the road. The Sorento drives like a truck, which surprised me honestly because a number of other Kias and Hondas, other uh, crossover vehicles have more car-like road manners and the Sorento really doesn't. The Sorento reminds me an awful lot of the GMT 360 series SUVs. Perhaps not quite as truckish and has they have a little bit better road feel in this Sorento, but it's in that same category of vehicle and that same category of road feel. The one thing that's decidedly not truck-like about the Sorento is the fuel economy because even though this vehicle is only rated for 18 miles per gallon city and 24 on the highway with an EPA combined rating of 20, we've been averaging 23 to 24 miles per gallon in this vehicle uh, over a wide variety of driving situations and about 650 miles so far this week. That's excellent for a vehicle that's this size and this heavy, especially when you consider that my daily commute takes me up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass. So the fuel economy from this 3.3 liter direct injection engine is excellent. And again, you can thank that, that very modern engine up front for that fuel economy, as well as the trick all wheel drive system that normally sends all the power to the front wheel. We may have a lock button on the dash, but unlike traditional SUVs, there is no center differential in the Kia Sorento. Instead, the front and the rear differentials are always locked together via a multi-plate clutch pack. And what the lock button does is it locks that clutch pack together. So there's no true center differential. The only way that you can get the front and the rear differentials to rotate at different velocities is by allowing that clutch plate to slip. 
that's very different than your uh, your traditional more hardcore off-road machine it's not going to be quite as durable of course because the the friction material will heat up the oil will heat up and performance will suffer a bit but for 99 percent of people honestly in their in their uh, suv or cuv purchases this is completely adequate because the vast majority of drivers will never take their suv or their crossover on anything even approaching this bad road here most people are really just going to be out there in suburbia uh, and their their big reason for buying a crossover vehicle is because they like the ride height they like the way it looks they like the way it feels and they don't want to get their front end caught on those parking lot headstones like the Subaru Forester, the Kia Sorento is trying to be a slightly more off-road capable crossover vehicle than your run-of-the-mill crossover in this segment. And as such, it's a little bit interesting and it's a little bit more difficult to compare directly with some of the other entries here. The Toyota Venza is decidedly an on-road crossover vehicle. You really would not want to take your Venza off-road. Uh, gravel roads are fine, of course, but if it encounters something larger than, you know, say, a, a, your average brick out on the road, then you're going to start scraping things underneath the vehicle. That won't happen happen in the Serrano that won't happen in the Forester. That really makes the Forester probably the, the best comparison with this vehicle. Uh, and in terms of the Forester versus Sorrento comparison, the Sorrento is much more refined. It has a much nicer interior, it's much quieter, the engine is way more refined than those boxer engines that you'll find under the hood of the Subaru. The off-road system is not quite as uh, advanced as the Super system, not quite as rugged, but again for the vast majority of drivers that really doesn't matter. In terms of the Ford Edge, and the uh, GMC Equinox and uh, our GMC Terrain and the Chevy Equinox, I should say, uh, this vehicle represents an incredible value because this is about $5,000 cheaper than a comparably equipped Ford Edge. It has about the same amount of power under the hood with that 3.3 liter direct injection engine. We went from 0 to 60 in about 8.3 seconds, which is very respectable when you compare it to the competitors. And this vehicle has overall a nicer feature set than those other vehicles. Admittedly, Kia does, you know, take back a few points for having these hard dashboard plastics and hard door plastics. But if you think about it, I think that my personal preference would be uh, that I would give up those soft touch plastics for things like the power folding mirrors, the dual zone climate control, um, the LCD disco dash. I think that that's a worthy trade-off. And while some people might deride Kia for these hard dash plastics, I think that uh, if a decision had to be made between the one and the other, I think Kia made the right decision. The Sorento EX model ranges from $31,700 to about $36,000 as our model is equipped here. Of course, if you get that seven passenger option, it's going to cost you a little bit more. And the regular Sorento runs from about $24,000 to about $28,000, depending again on your option packages, your engine choice, whether or not you're going to go with five or seven seats. Kia has made a very compelling vehicle with this refresh of the 2014 Kia Sorento. You know, we have that 3.3 liter direct injection V6 under the hood, which gets excellent fuel economy and delivers very good performance in this particular vehicle. We have a price tag that's reasonable as well, $35,000 as equipped, with a, long, a number of options that you don't find in the competition. The side profile is a little bit boring, but it is obvious when you look at the side that we get a decent amount of off-road ride height. That's excellent because this vehicle has a bit more off-road prowess than you'd find in some of the competition. Again, we have that five to seven passenger seating in the rear. We have this large cargo area in the rear, and it tops off with a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty and a five year, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. If you, if you take a look at all those together, then it, it causes my normal SUV crossover ranking to shift a little bit. I would place this just below the GMC Terrain and uh, perhaps the Ford Edge, perhaps. This is probably a close second to my Ford Edge Lycan. And my like of the Ford Edge mostly comes from its interior. It's definitely not as good of a vehicle as this off-road. Um, it's not as nice in, in terms of uh, feature set for the price as this particular vehicle. Uh, this vehicle is about $5,000 cheaper than most of its competition. Definitely rank this above the Toyota Venza if you're looking at a Venza or a Chevy Equinox, however. Oh, there's another little cubby there. <clears throat> okay, ready? Hey, what's under here? Oh, the storage cubby. Do you think we fit under there? I don't know, maybe. Okay, let's see. You hold that. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're too big. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, put it down. Put it down. Try put it down. Try pushing it down. Does it does it latch or anything? No, you have to. No, try try putting it down. I'm laying flat. Put it down. Try squishing it. Oh! No, that was bad. No, let's not do that. 
Ow. Ow. <laughs> I can't get out. I can't. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs>